Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This has been a long awaited video. It is finally coming and I'm going to share with you guys my personal statement that got me an offer from LSE, USC and that is it. I haven't heard back from King's College London yet and I don't know when they're gonna give me a response. I don't really care anymore because I basically accepted my offer to LSE because nothing's gonna trump LSE. It's a double degree. I love it. Basically, I'm gonna share with you guys what I wrote to secure me a place to LSE and have that conditional offer which I announced a few videos back and I did say I'm going to share my personal statement with you guys. I have made a separate video talking about my tips on literally writing a personal statement, not reading out my personal statement but writing it and I've used all the tips of that video when I was writing this personal statement because that video was filmed in the process of me writing this personal statement and I'm really glad that LSE has approved my writing because I got an offer from them. I also hope the lighting is fine. If the lighting is bad i really apologize because today is very gloomy since i'm in the uk and weather is not always sunny here so it's really dark for my personal statement i will put a split screen here to show you my personal statement obviously but um the title of my personal statement is called letter of motivation because it basically depicts what motivate me to pursue this master to attend this prestigious university and first tip is i think is to include a title in your personal statement because i feel like a lot of people forget to title their personal statement because every single piece of writing you make there should be a title but instead of just writing personal statement as your title maybe add something more unique which gives a great first impression already the first sentence anyone read is a title so you should make it as snappy as possible and mine's the letter of motivation okay i'm just gonna start with the structure of my personal statement this one is a tricky one because it is a double degree so i have to write about two university in one piece of writing at the start i wrote about the main theme that will revolve around my personal statement which is my past experience of diagnosing with encephalitis uh if you didn't know i had epilepsy when i was 16 and i went into an eight-day coma that was probably the toughest time in my life but that made me learn so much and just made me a stronger person in general yes it was really difficult i actually made a video talking about that five four years ago so yeah anyway this personal statement just revolves around that because a lot of the things that i choose to do now really reflects upon my experience of having my coma and all that that really just built my character through that big experience of my life so that's why that is the main theme i talked about that in my introduction and i started by talking about lse and some theory that i'm studying and how that links to a course in lse and then i talked about a specific professor in lse that i like to engage with because it links to what i am interested in researching in lse in my masters and then i critically analyzed one of the lse professors book after that i talked about usc and the facilities there and why i want to go to the us for my second year and then i touched upon my dissertation because that was relevant to what i'm going to pursue in my masters basically this is like a research proposal but a really personal research proposal what i wanted to research in master level is digital parasocial relationships where influencer youtuber can build a connection with their audience as if they are friends i can see let's say soella as my friend as my best friend but she doesn't even know i exist and it just really fascinates me that these kind of connections exist in real life and as as human being we build an attachment to someone that we consistently consume information from and that someone might not even know we exist but then we value them so much and it's just mind-boggling that this happens because of social media these things happen more frequently and more easily you follow more people on social media everything becomes more distant but very connected at the same time yeah i'll read my first paragraph i'm really blabbering a lot so when i was 16 i was diagnosed with encephalitis a severe brain inflammation and went into an eight-day coma that was also the time where Susanna from the film Brain on Fire and I crossed paths. In the film, Susanna had a similar disease as me, and her resilience to recover motivated me daily throughout my recovery journey. 
The relationship I have built with her is referred to as the parasocial relationship, which conceptualizes a one-sided relationship between audience of media and the characters. Although this parasocial relationship was developed when I was attached with needles at the intensive care unit, if it had not been for her for the internet, Susanna would have never be, been capable of building social and emotional support that was tantamount to my family. family. My past has inspired my research interest in digital parasocial relationships, and I hope to join the world-leading London School of Economics and Political Science and University of Southern California, Annenberg, to continue my journey towards studying the notion of parasocial relationships under the context of modern media. Yeah, it was really simple, and it just kind of just signposts to you like what my research interest is, why I developed that research interest, and what I'm going to talk about for the rest of the essay. I started with talking about LSE. So once at LSE, I look forward to addressing the paradigm of social communication in contemporary society through participating in the module Interpersonal Mediated Communications. I looked through the module that I like, and I picked the module that I like, and I talked about why this will help me in my research. I said this by saying how I am particularly interested in critically analyzing this notion with a focus on YouTube, the interpersonal mediated communication. I want to link that to YouTube and how I see YouTube as a space where viewers can connect with YouTubers on a personal level through understanding their morning routine, their personal opinions, or even what they eat in a, eat, eat in a day. Viewers are not able to see much more of a YouTuber's life because of society's technological advancements, which immensely differs from traditional celebrities. Before YouTubers, celebrities' lives were documented by the media through a third-person perspective, contrary to what is now the first person. This just adds another reason for my interest in just studying parasocial relationship because I think I just use a specific platform, YouTube, to elaborate on why I want to do this research. And I also linked a theory that I've learned in my undergrad study, which is called Goffman's Theoretical Framework of the Drama Dramatur oh my God. of the Dramaturgical Approach to Self-Presentation. And it is one of my favorite theories. So I put that in because that is also relevant to my research content. I try to link most of my paragraph back to the main point. I ended this paragraph saying, these are the kind of questions I hope to ask at LSE. So it's just like what, what specifically what I want to expand, what, what specific thing I want to research in the realm of parasocial relationship. And then the next bit, I talked about a professor that I am really interested in engaging with, which is Nick Caudry. I read one of his work. I watched myriads of his YouTube video. I really like this guy and how he thinks about data, data mining, and just social media, and also parasocial relationships. I talked about his book about the cause of connection, which I've read. And I, there are some bits about the book that I'm a bit iffy about, which I also noted in this writing. Because one thing I do want to show is my ability to think critically to the recruitment officer. And that is something that university really cherished. So I have done this by saying that, however, I, I argue since data colonialism is not inherently maintained by abuses, it is cr crucially different from historical colonialism. I, I agree that excessive inequality and underpaid an underpaid job caused by data colonialism is immoral. Nevertheless, data colonialism is not directly e equivalent to the violence of slavery that exists during historical colonialism. In their writing, they overlook some great benefits of internet being a powerful social tool that can connect people from all walks of life, partic particularly, particularly now that the COVID-19 pandemic has moved our social life online in unprecedented ways. So I also liked how I linked it to current recent event, which is COVID-19. I continue saying, as the internet continues to develop, the digital parasocial relationship phenomenon will become more complex and has the potential to manifest powerful changes. With the immense loyalty from followers, digital parasocial relationships can bring people together and generate new spaces for solidarity, free from quantified data systems, and this is one of the many reasons why I wish to pursue the study of parasocial relationship at master's level. I really, really like this sentence, how I just kind of really emphasize why, like why I wanted to do this because I see clear optimistic potential of 
parasocial relationship, mitigating or even ameliorating the bad things that are happening to social media right now. Parasocial relationship could be bad, but it could also bring good things such as social solidarity from the internet. Uh, that is why I want to pursue and do my research on it. And then now I move on to USC and I said, my transition is basically beyond the focus of parasocial relationship. Once at USC, I am thrilled to explore the United States of America. Being an international student in the United Kingdom, my wanderlust kept growing, igniting my inner ambition to explore more countries across the globe and grow as I go. I wish to participate in many initiatives at USC, especially with the Annenberg Innovation Lab, the origin of the podcast, How Do You Like It So Far? Obviously, I have digged up USC's facilities, what they do, the podcast they do, and what they offer their students. And I picked out some things that I really like to engage in once I'm in America. I do want to show that I am a curious person. I like to learn new culture and doing a master doesn't only mean to grow academically. As I said in my USC section of this paragraph, I also want to grow through exploring different places in the world. So that's why I said beyond the focus of parasocial relationship, because I don't want to look like an extreme nerd because I still want to engage with talks and activity in a university campus. I further elaborated that by saying I envision myself being an explorer and creator at the unique think and do tank, engaging with the civic media speaker series and listening to talks hosted by experts that are employed at media, media intersections. I hope through my time at USC, I do not only gain knowledge in the field of global media and communication, but can also inspire and create a community with other students. Therefore, Right there, I'm explicitly emphasizing that I am not a nerd. I also would make an impact in the community. I will make friends and I'll be a good asset to your university. I can be good with my grades, but I can also have social interactions in a way. That's what I'm trying to put out there. And then back to some academic nerdy stuff I said, I also look forward to honing my pragmatic research with the rich research pack practicum USC Annenberg provides such as doing advanced statistical research for social sciences through this specific course. Yeah, I also point that it is a methodology I've not explored deeply during my undergraduate study and I will take this opportunity to add my methods repertoire when writing my research. I do say that I am not 100% expert in this field there are some gap in my knowledge and i don't know how to do advanced statistical research for social science but that's okay that's what masters is for is to fill in the gaps that you have or the questions you have created through learning in undergrad they never expect you to be a a star student coming into master they want you to have the passion to learn what you are curious about instead of just acing everything so yeah, I'm just saying that, oh, I don't know how to do this, but because there is this module that USC provides, it's a great foundation for me to build this gap of knowledge that I have, that I noticed in my undergrad study. And then I move on to talk about some work I've done at undergrad study level. So I talked about some books I've read and how I have learned that after reading that book, Facebook is a very important public sphere for the Hong Kong protest that has happened and I just wanted to learn more about digital activism uh, aside from the parasocial relationship. So I also said that during my time undertaking my master's studies, I do not only wish to enrich my knowledge in parasocial relationship, but utilize the cross discipline, the cross discipline, I can't say that word, the cross disciplinary nature of the degree and learn more about other realms of the media, which I think is very important when it comes to masters. The beauty of my degree, my masters, is that I can take modules from other departments and I do want to take advantage of that and expand my knowledge in media. So I talked about how I want to learn about digital activism as well. Okay, and then we have reached the penultimate paragraph which is talking about my dissertation. I just basically talked about how my dissertation links to my research interests and uh, some interesting theory that I came across. And I was also really honest saying how I'm still at an early stage of my dissertation research, but then through writing my literature review, I have came across this and I hope that I can elaborate on this and it's really interesting. It's just stuff that I have done already that I think I could bring along with me in my master's education. And then we've reached the conclusion. In my conclusion, I have made one sentence that sums up my reason why. So it's basically, I said, in short, I want to study 
MSc Global Media and Communication because first, I see clear potential of myself improving as a researcher at both universities. Second, the selection of modules strongly ignited my curiosity. Third, having the opportunity to learn in a global campus is a dream come true. I basically summarize all of my points and there's three digestible key takeaways for the admission officer to really understand my intention. And I also just kind of briefly mentioned my plans after staying master, although I don't really have a plan, so it is so vague because I don't know what I want to do. So yeah. Okay, I have talked for 15 minutes straight and I have developed a sore throat symptom. But that is basically my personal statement summed up. In total, 1,427 words. The I think the word limit was 1,500 words, so I was just below the word limit. And I really try to condense it and just tell you why I wrote each part of the paragraph and how everything comes together. I think all in all, the best tip is just to make everything really concise, clear, get straight to the point and don't waffle too much. Make sure everything you write in there adds value to why you are a good asset to that specific university, how you can benefit them as a student, how you are passionate about the things you want to study. I'm so glad I finally made this video. It's actually really scary because a personal statement is obviously very personal and I basically have just threw out my whole personality out of the internet to the whole wide world to see. But I really hope this helped you because when I was writing my personal statement, I have used a lot of YouTube videos on the internet for inspiration. Obviously don't plagiarize my writing because that's a no-no and if you plagiarize people will know because it doesn't sound coherent. But yeah, that is all. I'm gonna shut up now. See you guys next week. Bye!